Hello friends. Today I am going to give myself a very simple manicure and paint my nails because I am going to a party. I'm filming this on Easter Saturday and my friend likes to hold a margarita party every Easter Saturday every year and it's called Margarista. <laughs> so I thought I would paint my nails a festive colour for the occasion. I have here some beautiful candles to set the mood. This spotted one is vanilla and this beautiful one I don't actually know. It was given to me as a gift by my real estate agents when I rented this house and I foolishly threw away the box that it came in but it has this very potent sort of tropical flower sort of smell if you can imagine something sort of wild and dark that's the scene that I'm setting for you here so whatever beautiful scents come to mind when you think of wild and dark. That's my environment for my manicure. Now my nails have gotten quite long recently. So I guess the first thing for me to do is file them off slightly. So I have this metal nail file. And I have been grooming my nails regularly so they don't need too much but I can see I have a little dint here Manicurists say you should only ever file in one direction, like this. Not in a seesawing motion like this, because that frays the fibers in your nail and it will lead to a rough edge that will break. And I believe they also intend for you to file towards the center. So rather than one way the whole way around, you file in towards the center. But I'm not very good at that. So I just file one way the whole way around. These ones are fine. I've been filing them over the last few days.
So the next thing to do is to push the cuticles back. But this is very difficult to do when your nails are dry. So the best time to do it is either just out of the shower, when your cuticles are very soft, or when you have rested your fingernails in some warm water for a few minutes. Or you can do what I'm going to do and rub some moisturizer into them to soften them up. I don't paint my nails very often so I don't have like a cuticle oil or any of those specific products. So I sometimes just use a hand cream when my hands and nails get dry. But I've run out of hand cream, so... I have this body butter. This is from a company called Pure Fiji and they're quite ubiquitous in Fiji and um, Australians go to Fiji a lot because it's only a couple of hours flight away and um, it's reasonably cheap and uh, so just about everyone you know will have come back with some Pure Fiji at some point. So I'm just going to massage a little bit into my cuticles and then I'm going to push them back with this orange stick. It's quite a firm body butter. I think because it's based on oils which solidify at a fairly high temperature. You can have a look at the ingredients list in a moment. Now, pushing back the cuticle is a fairly important part of a manicure, but you have to be careful because the cuticle is a very important part of the nail. It's there to protect you from dirt and microbes getting in. So you don't ever want to cut off your cuticles. I know some manicurists will do that, but it's kind of just an invitation to infection. That being said, if your cuticles are left alone, they can become a little overgrown 
and that's how you get hangnails. So it's a delicate balance. But when you're going to put on nail polish, you should push them back because it creates a nice, smooth, clean surface and gives you a little bit more nail to deal with. And you can see I'm actually taking some dead skin off the cuticle here. So this is a good time to have a tissue or some sort of wipe. So you can just wipe it off because you don't want to transfer bacteria around your fingers. I was given this in a little travel sized packet of a selection of products from this company which I think somebody collected on holiday to Fiji and just decided they weren't going to use so got some free cosmetics. It's always much harder to do this with your non-dominant hand. I'm right-handed, so my right fingernails never look quite as good as the left. I'm sure you can relate. I'm not in any way a manicurist or even an enthusiast of this subject, so really know what I'm doing. I have been grooming my own nails since I was in my early teens though, so I mean putting nail polish on obviously I always cut my nails even as a child. I'm going to have to just get my fingernail in there and get this piece of skin off. There we go. Even if you are not really inclined to decorate your nails, it's a really good idea to maintain your cuticles and regularly cut and file your nails. So men in particular can often neglect their fingernails. But your fingernails do need love. So, I don't have any hangnails at the moment. But if you did, I would definitely advise simply clippering them off. Don't pull them. We've all experienced the carnage that can occur when you pull a hangnail. Just clip them as close as you can to the side and then just leave it alone and it will go away eventually. I know that's really hard to do, 
just to leave the hangnail alone, but it's much more preferable than uh, getting yourself into a situation where you've pulled out a strip down the side of your nail and it's bleeding and it's sore and then you have to wear a plaster, a band-aid or something. Deeply regret your decision immediately. So. Now, I can't put nail varnish on an oily surface. So what I'm going to do is just take a very light swipe of nail varnish remover, which will basically strip any oil off my fingernails. These bottles are always child-proof, which is fun. Can be a real test of your adulthood. It's time to choose a color. So I'm going to show you my whole collection. I don't have a lot of nail polishes anymore because, as I said, I don't paint my nails very often. And I recently moved house and I did a big cull of my possessions and one of the things that got reduced was my collection of nail polishes. And I think I've got it down to a collection that is useful to me. Colours that I like. Okay, so let me show you. keep all my nail polishes in this delightfully ugly bag. I think it was one of these sort of gifts with purchase type of things, like a cosmetic bag that came with a purchase of cosmetics. So it's purple and shiny and quilted. And in my house it lives well out of sight. But it's useful for my collection of nail polish. Now, I haven't painted my nails in absolutely ages. So this collection is going to be as much a surprise to you as it is to me. <laughs> so let's have a look. This is an Essie, sort of nude colour, called 
rock candy. Another nude by an Australian brand called Chi Chi. This is I have no idea. It doesn't say. And we have a pearl. Sort of champagne pearl color by Essie. Kisses and Bisses. can read the colour on this one, it's called Pelican Fly. Yeah, definitely can't read the colour on that other one. A top coat by Chi Chi. This has some glitter particles in it. This is a sort of candy cherry red by Essie called Escapades. Another cherry red by OPI. This is called Tasmanian Devil made me do it. It's appropriate for Australia. And I'm running out of room, so I'll just move some of these out of the way. Another red. I think my mum gave me this one. It's called Nebula. And it's by a company called Red Earth. Which I think is also an Australian company. Another OPI. This is a very vampy colour. They love their puns. It's called quarter of a cent cherry. Quarter of a century. This is an Australian clothing brand called Portman's. And they do have some nail varnishes. That one is called Blueberry. And the last one just a little clear coat by Essence. So I'm going to match my shade to my outfit today. I am wearing some pants or for the UK viewers trousers with bright colors on them 
and one of the colors is pretty close to one of these. So this one seems like a slightly bluer red and this one is a little more towards the orange side and the flowers on my clothes are more bluish. And as I said, because I don't do this very often, I don't really have a top coat and a bottom coat. I just use this one clear coat. So I'm going to put a hand wipe down so that I don't get nail varnish on my table. So the usual advice with nail polish is that you should do a base clear coat and then one or two coats of colour and then a top coat. But I find for me more coats equals more chipping. I have very um, thin, quite brittle nails, fingernails. I always have, uh, ever even since I was a young child, so they don't really stand up to a lot of coating and I find because they are quite thin and flexible they bend and then when they bend nail polish kind of splits so what I've learned to do is just put the colour down straight onto the naked fingernail and then a clear coat on top for some extra gloss. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll start with the easiest hand to do. I'll use my dominant right hand to paint my left. It's always a good idea to shake your nail polish first. And then how you apply it really is up to you. People develop their own techniques. Common wisdom is to go in three strokes, one down the center and then two on each side. That can work. And the other thing you want to do is don't try to get the polish all the way up to the skin. Aim for having like a millimeter, half a millimeter around each side. You'll get a much neater application and you won't end up with varnish all over your skin.
It's also easier if you have more varnish on your brush rather than less. So that's pretty good. This is going to be interesting. I find it much easier to lay the hand down to do my right hand. And just remember slow and steady. By the way, I definitely don't recommend hovering your limbs above a candle the way that I'm doing right now. <laughs> but it's the only way to get you an angle where you can see my fingers. So I hope you guys appreciate the sacrifices I make for you. It's hard to do your thumb. It doesn't go at the same angle as the other fingers.
So as predicted, a second coat of colour has resulted in a couple of little mishaps. I've managed to get a little bit of colour on the skin. What I tend to do in that situation is wait until it dries. But I think in this case, I'm going to just leave it for now. And when it's dry, probably on my way to the party, I will just run a fingernail around that bit. And you can just kind of scrape it off the cuticle. It's probably not the thing that a manicurist would recommend, but the bleed onto my skin is so tiny that even using a pointed Q-tip would still kind of ruin the fingernail polish. So, that's it. I have red nails for the party. I hope you have found this demonstration relaxing. Perhaps you learned something. Or perhaps you just learned what not to do. I hope you have a wonderful day or a wonderful evening. And I'll talk to you again soon.